So I, I just reset that, and you know when you reset it, and it shows you a little photograph of the first slide, and the first slide is me pointing the finger, and I thought, oh my gosh, I'm doing a lot of finger wagging tonight. <laughs> I apologise for that. Well, I'm not really apologising. <laughs> um, so, uh, are we are we good, or do we have any other questions here on this? This is very. I'm enjoying this, by the way. This is helping me as well. So, any more points you want to raise? Uh, anything you want to discuss or question? If you want to repeat stuff, I'm happy to do that as well. I'll give you a minute while I get to the next dwelling place in here. Gerard raised his hand, go for it. Yep, cool. Yeah. Well, um, it's, it's once again, it's very simple. Um, so I've spoken to quite a few people in the last year who are either coming into the faith or thinking about coming into the faith or are new to the faith. Okay. Um, it's very rare to talk to them about their personal sin. Very rare. The vast majority of the conversations have been questions about the faith, them wanting to know more about the faith, the majority wanting to know about real prayer and how can I spend time in silence before God and what am I doing in silence before God and so on. And we haven't... I. I, I can't remember too many conversations about personal sin. Um, now, one of the reasons behind that is because it's not really my job. I'm not their catechist. Um, the catechist is meant to do that. But also, when they go through baptism or confirmation, they will go to their first confession and they will, or they will just go through the rite of baptism and all their sins will be washed away. Either way, it's it's they want they're in the process of metanoia. They're in the process of conversion. I don't need to go pointing out stuff that and in fact okay, so as I'm talking about this, I'm actually thinking about an example or two where people have actually, you know, in the conversation, they've actually brought up moral issues. And they've said, look, I have this problem, or I have this issue, or I'm wondering about this. Sometimes it's about abortion, sometimes it's about contraception, sometimes it's about, um, I don't know, um, uh, divorce and remarriage and so on. And, and so it's been part of the conversation, but there's been no need for me to challenge them on their sin at all. Um, in fact, all I'm doing is actually trying to help them to get deeper in their prayer life and just get some of their RCIA questions answered. Um, now, in the in the in the Protestant, go go, Gerard, is the fingers up again. Okay, but the first soul to be converted is mine. I must convert my own soul before I can actually effectively work on the conversion of another. Um, now, uh, once again, this is Sister Leslie Lund covers this in the fifth mansion. She says it's only in the fifth mansion where the soul really becomes so radically transformed they are of great use to the church and to the Lord because they're completely on fire for Jesus. That's where the transformation comes in. 
in this in this state that you know I, I mean at the moment i could fall any day now i can't accuse other people of their faults i'm in no position to do it at all uh, my own transformation is the focal point and if as during that transformation if the lord happens to lead souls to me who i can minister to in some way or another most of the ministry to those souls is about helping them on their own conversion thank you Feli. We're not in the position to judge anyone. No, it's spot on. And in fact, Christ himself warns us, the judgment you receive, you, you give, is the judgment you will receive. Now, yes, we can see people in the church who we think, hey, they, you know, they're all coming to communion, they're not going to confession, and they're, you know, they're receiving communion on the tongue, on the hand, whatever, whatever. These are not really relevant arguments for me. The most important argument for me is, Lord, I need to get to the fifth mansion. That's it. I'm not interested at all at the moment in the morality of my the person warming the pew next to me. In fact, if anything, if that person starts talking to me, my intention is how to lead that person into a deeper union with Christ. Ellie, go for it. I hope I'm not digging myself into a hole here. <laughs> no, it's just, it just knows if it's well, it's not, it's not a question. Um, again, I was reading the um, the requirements and the Kirtley of Agrius, and what they say, because I just talk about morale in general, but they say that God sometimes allows to, people to suffer from certain sins, like pornography, or mm. um, you know, we have all this mixed um, gender things, and or or even mm. eating disorders in order to prevent, because, because that causes shame. So if you have shame, mm. you don't go for vain glory, vain glory, or mm -hmm. or pride. Brilliant. It, it's a good thing. Brilliant. So, but now what's happening? What I'm seeing now. So if shame is being removed, because now it's not a shame to be different gender, and mm. pornography is not a shame anymore, and probably even eating disorders is not a shame anymore. Mm. So that opens the gate for the bigger which will cause major, major issues. And we're seeing that in the world now. So I think it's just good to be aware of what's, what's happening really. And in my experience, Ellie, um, when people are doing pornography and sex outside of marriage and so on, they are walking in tremendous guilt and shame. And they will often be trying to be in denial, okay, which is very powerful, you know, oh yeah, yeah, I mess about with pornography and yeah, 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 I've, I've got a bit of this and I do a few drugs and stuff, it doesn't bother me. That's on the surface. If you actually stand next to a person like that for long enough and you're there praying with them quietly, eventually the shame surfaces. Because you can't, you can't cover it up. You absolutely can't do it. They will, and, and what they're trying to do at the moment is with all this gender dysphoria and so on, they want to talk about it as much as they can in the hope that the confession of what they're doing is going to solve their guilt. But it's only the absolution that removes the guilt. But they're all talking about it because people want to talk about their sinful behaviours. They will initially say, you know, oh, I, I'm not. This is my secret. But nope, it all comes out eventually. It all comes out, and it is they 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 can't help themselves. My conversations with loads of people over the years, who have been into all sorts of sexual misdemeanours of some sort, shame and guilt become an increasingly heavy burden increasingly and often they just need somebody who is not doing it to stand next to them and not exercise the slightest bit of judgment but just let them breathe out their sinful behavior and what i've had to do in what i've done many many times i've done on band ministry with people is just to encourage them and just to say look there is no judgment there is no condemnation just keep on talking. Just get it all out. And people, when they... This is a very important part, I think, of Unbound Ministry, if my memory serves me well. But the important thing is to let them talk it out and never judge. Never judge. You can't judge these people because once you do, 
they clam up and you've lost them. They have to be given freedom to renounce their deepest, darkest secrets in freedom and knowing, and this, is, this, was, this was something very important in Unbound, they must believe that they're being loved right there and then. And in fact, that's one of the key questions you ask at the end. Did you feel loved throughout this session? And they said that, so the ones I've, I've done with over the years, they've always said, yes, we, we felt really loved. Never condemned, never judged, but loved. Okay? Am I doing all right here, everyone? No. <laughs> okay, I'm just resetting my mobile again. This is working, actually, because, okay, I'll tell you.